Hallelujah for a church to be in existence for 35 years and still going strong. 35 years. Hallelujah. If that's a reason to give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. While you're clapping, let's give God a hand praise for the founder of this great ministry, the Reverend Garland Harrison Sr. Hallelujah. Who said yes to God's will. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. While you're clapping, let's give it up for Mother Harrison, his wife, his lovely wife, who, are, who is still with us. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God for the family of the Harrisons. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God. We thank God. So on next month, the first month and the second month, we're going to celebrate our anniversary. We're going to do it the same time frame, 11 o'clock. But we're going to be celebrating. We're going to have guest speakers on those two Sundays. We're asking the boards, do you know what you're supposed to do? We had a meeting with you. We're asking everybody that's not on a board, you're on an auxiliary, to be prepared with a $35 offering on those two Sundays. Amen? Amen. Amen. $35 offering to bless God with for, to, uh, for symbolic for the 35 years that we've been in service. Amen? Amen. Amen. God will bless you real good. Amen. On today, we have a special treat for you uh, in, in honor of uh, Mother uh, Women's Month. Amen. I, f I thought it not robbery to ask one of my good friends to come by to help uh, to, to, to speak to you, to preach to you, to teach to you, however God uh, sees fit to use her on today. We pray that you will sit with your tent doors open and your praise ready and your worship ready to release unto God. Amen. 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 We thank God for we've been knowing each other for a long, long time. We came up in the same ministry, Powerful Praise Tabernacle. She, she, she's a, a very anointed woman of God. Amen. Crossover, y'all know her. She prayed with us a couple of times. Amen. And some of y'all been talking about her since she prayed and said how she, anointed she was. And so and today, she's going to bless us with the word of God. We pray that you will be able to receive, amen, what it is that God is going to say to her on today. So let us stand. Let us move forward. Amen. Let's begin. The atmosphere is already set. The atmosphere is already set. I feel a praise in the building like never before hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah let's begin to clap our hands let's begin to praise god for the ministry hallelujah for the word hallelujah for the anointing of our Christi minister christina kennedy amen come on let's give her praise as she come forth hallelujah thank you jesus God bless you. Amen. You may have your seats. I don't feel like a guest here. Amen. I definitely feel like I am a part of the Crossover Baptist Church family. So when Pastor Campbell asked me to come over and share a word with you, I said, of course. Amen. Amen. It is Women's History Month. Amen. And I'm here just representing for the ladies. Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to be a woman. Amen. And I'm so glad to have the privilege and honor to stand before you with the word of God. Amen. I give honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my bishop, Daryl Hill, who permitted me to be here. Amen. To your pastor, Pastor Campbell, and First Lady Campbell. Amen. And to my husband, in his absence, my children, amen. amen. And to all of you, God's children, it is a blessed thing to be in the presence of God. Amen. 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 I want to acknowledge those that are not here with us, amen, but are at home watching on social media. God bless you. Amen. amen. We are going to the word of God and my text can be found in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts beginning at the 22nd verse, and we're going to be going down to verse 28. Amen. 
Amen. Again, that is Acts, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse, and we will be reading down to the 28th verse. Acts 22 reads, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars's hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might af feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And I'm just gonna read verse 28 again. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. And this morning, I'm going to just speak to you for a few minutes. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I'm going to speak to you from the topic, give me a minute to catch my breath. Amen. Give me a minute. I just need one minute to catch my breath. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for an opportunity to stand before your people to deliver your word, O oh God. We pray, Father, that your people's ears would be open, O oh God, their hearts and their minds would be open to receive a word directly from you. Hide me behind the cross. Let no flesh be glorified, God, but that you would get the glory. We thank you now, and we bless your name for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give me a minute to catch my breath. Tomorrow is actually a pretty important day, um, March 15th, because on March 15th of last year, the governor had made a decision to shut down the city. So as of uh, this Monday, we will have lived through a pandemic for an entire year. Now, I don't know about you, but the last year, uh, this time last year was a little depressing. And it was a very difficult time for everyone, despite the fact that we all may have had something different that we experienced. And although we may not know what each other experienced, we do know that the person that's sitting right across from you, right behind you, the person that may be sitting on the couch next to you, we all know that everyone went through something. We all have a testimony to give after living and continuing to live through a pandemic. So I was scrolling through my timeline on Facebook and was quickly reminded of the hard times we experienced during the past year. Yeah. And although things don't feel the same as they did last year, we are still living in uncertain times 
and the world still has questions about what is happening around us. People are still filled with anxiety and although we are not in isolation now in the same way that we were last year this time, we are still learning with and we're learning to deal with and cope with the stress of the experience and the way that our lives have changed. Although there is a vaccine for COVID, people are still worried and concerned about what will happen next. I'm sure you can recall the earlier months of the pandemic as friends and family were getting sick with the virus. They were calling for prayer and they were looking for answers from you. And if we're honest, we didn't have any answers because we were looking for answers ourselves. And one year later, people are still feeling overwhelmed and discouraged because the things we are experiencing still look as strange as they did and unfamiliar as they did a year ago. We are living in unfamiliar times and under strange circumstances. Stores are closing and are going out of business. Neighborhoods are changing and things are just not the same. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about? Has anybody been to the city and noticed that many of the stores in the city have closed? If you've gone to the mall, some of the stores that you used to love to shop at, they're gone, they're not there anymore. Things are really changing all around us. You're looking around at all that has happened and it's still happening and it still seems very unfamiliar. Still seems a little bit strange. But something that I came to realize is we don't really know the God of a pandemic. One, because we never had this experience before in our lifetimes. And two, because things were happening so quickly that we just couldn't catch our breath. We never had to work in a pandemic or go to church in a pandemic. No one ever had to pastor or lead in a pandemic. We never had to learn in a pandemic. Children are going to school in a pandemic. Teachers are teaching in the pandemic. Judges are judging in the pandemic. We didn't have to parent in a pandemic. This is new for all of us. And because of that, we have never experienced the work of God in our lives during a pandemic. So it hasn't been easy for some of us to trace God in this situation. It seems like the God that we thought we knew has become unknown to us because we can't trace him in some of the things that we faced and experienced over the past year. But one thing that I quickly discovered is that some of the things we thought were important were not as important as we thought. And although plagues and pandemics and epidemics are not new, we had to begin to shift our lifestyles to adjust to what was happening. Going into isolation, keeping our distance from one another, wearing masks, not being able to gather together with large numbers of people has been hard, but we also have to shift our thinking about God because the devil wants us to believe that God is far from us. If you had told me last year that we would still be in some form of isolation this year, I wouldn't have believed you. In fact, I wasn't expecting the conditions we were facing to go beyond the end of the year, honestly. But despite the fact that things did not go the way that we may have expected, we are all still here. Can you just give God a hand praise for being here? Amen. Amen. And although we experience some loss and disappointment, we are all still here. The devil is always busy trying to convince us to give up our belief that despite what is going on around us, that God is still good. But the fact of the matter is the enemy wanted you to get to the point of frustration that would cause you to take the stance that I'm just going to curse God and die. I'm, I'm giving up. It's too much happening. I give up. I'm giving up my relationship. I'm giving up on worship. I'm giving up on prayer. It's too much. In other words, he wanted 
and still desires for what you are dealing with to consume you to the point where you deny your faith, that you begin to use worldly devices to cope with what's happening in the world. He doesn't want you to pray to cope or to seek the face of God for answers because then you would know that he is in fact a liar. The Bible says that he would fool the very elect if it were possible, if it were possible. Don't let the devil fool you. You have more power than you think. God has given you more strength than you've actually ever even tapped into. God has given you power and authority right here in the earthly realm. The power of life and death lies in your tongue, and all you need to do is open your mouth and speak. Now, I don't want to give the wrong impression that suffering is not a part of the walk with Christ because we know that believers, as believers, that God's plan of salvation is indeed rooted in suffering. But I'm so glad that he said if we suffer with him, that we should also reign with him. And sometimes God allows things that seem to take our breath away to happen just so that we turn to him to be able to breathe again. In other words, he wants to restore our breathing. I heard one songwriter say, my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain, but that doesn't mean I can't complain, because there are a lot of things that we could complain about. Things aren't necessarily going the way that we envisioned for them to go when we came into the new year, but we're still not going to complain. I hold on to my theology that despite everything that is going on around me, God is still good. I'm learning, Pastor Campbell, that you can't just praise God because everything is going good in your life. You have to get to the point and make the decision that you will praise him even when you feel like you're suffocating because of life circumstances and the hardships that you're experiencing. You still must believe that at some point, God is going to give you a minute to catch your breath. I've come to the point where I understand that God has a history with me and although it seems like I don't know him and I can't understand what is happening right now, he has a history of bringing me out. He has a history of making a way out of no way. He has a history of being a healer and a way maker. Is there anybody else who has that testimony? He has a history of being your provider. And so you are of the mindset that if he did it before, he can certainly do it again. Amen. Things may look unfamiliar to me right now, but he has a history with me. He has a history of giving me moments to catch my breath and gather my bearings. And I know it feels like you can't breathe, but God is going to give you a moment just to catch your breath. Amen. Here we are now in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, and Paul is in the city of Athens. He is there awaiting Timothy and Silas to arrive, and while he is walking around the city, he notices many pagan gods and idols, and he becomes angry and vexed in his spirit about the things that he is seeing, but instead of allowing his emotions to overtake him, he uses it as an opportunity to share Christ with the people of Athens. Now, when reading this text, there were two things that really stood out to me. The first was the altar with the inscription to the unknown God. This was interesting because the Athenians were known to have many gods that they created with their hands. So to have a God that was unknown seemed a bit odd. So now Paul sees these objects of worship and the altar dedicated to the unknown God and tells them that this is the God he wants to speak to them about. Could you imagine the emptiness these people must have felt 
Because the truth of the matter is, if you're not worshiping the true and living God, there is never going to be an end to your search. We can admit that there are moments when we don't feel as if God is near, but we remember it's just a moment. Remember what he said, he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. And he would be with you even until the end of time. That feeling of being far from God is only temporary. He has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten about you. It's just a moment. So Paul seems to sense the Athenians' hunger and desire for the God they could not find. And that's the place we are in right now. The world is in search of the God it believes is unknown. So the next time someone calls on you for prayer, what they are really asking is, can you help me to find God? They are looking for you to assist them in finding God in their particular situation. That's why it's important as believers that we remember who we are in these circumstances so we can help the people in the world to know who God is and how to find him. The enemy wants you to forget who you are so that you lose sight of the power that is working on the inside of you. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Look at somebody and tell them you have power. Don't forget about your power. Don't forget about your power. There's power that's working on the inside of you. So Paul begins to reveal God to them in a way that was previously limited by idolatry. Paul wanted them to understand that God was not an object created by hands, but that he is Yahweh, the self-existent one. He is not the creation, but that he is in fact the one who is the creator. This is where we have to be careful that we don't slip into idolatry, that we don't make other things more important to us than we make God. It's easy to slip into this behavior when we give more time and effort and energy to other things. Our money has become a God to us. Our jobs have become a God to us acceptance and approval, these things we put our time and energy in can easily become God to us. But tell somebody, I want more. more. Just wave somebody and tell them, I want more. more. Amen. I want more more than the material things. I want more than I can put my hands on. I want more than I can see. I want more than I can feel and touch. I just want more. Tell somebody, I just want more. more. Because in times like this, We need to have more of him. You can have your fancy cars, you can have your big houses, you can have all the money that you want, but I just want more of God. Is anybody in that place today? You just want more of God, hallelujah. The other thing that stood out to me in the text is in verse 25, where Paul says, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he give to all life and breath and all things. Paul wanted to let them know that they were not independent of God because he was their life source. And even though he had no tangible perception of the God that he was presenting to them, that he, God, was still there. In other words, God was not made by the hands of man, so they couldn't touch him the same way they were accustomed, accustomed, hallelujah, to touching the gods they created by hand. We are delusional if we think that there is any way that we can live without God. And that's what Paul says that in, it is in him, hallelujah, that we live and move and have our being. Sometimes God allows tragedy 
and catastrophe to happen so that we will begin to diligently seek after him. Hallelujah. We are living in times that have confirmed, hallelujah, that we cannot live without God. We are learning how to live without things, but we certainly are not in a position to even try to live without God. He has been, hallelujah, our sustainer and our provider. He is the very reason that we have not lost our minds after living in a pandemic for a year. Hallelujah. We cannot live without him. God is our life source because he has breathed in us and by breathing hallelujah life is continued so in this way hallelujah we breathe the breathing is then connected to our living in other words we live and move because God breathed in us now, in order to fully understand the point that Paul is making here, we need to understand the respiratory process. Hallelujah. The process of the physiological respiration inclu includes two major parts, external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration, also known hallelujah as breathing involves both bringing air into the lungs inhaling and then exhaling releasing the air into the atmosphere the bible hallelujah tells us that the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath the breath of life and man became a living soul our breathing is a constant reminder that we we are living beings. So in a spiritual sense, when we have trouble breathing, it is an indication that we have lost hope and feel a sense of brokenness. But how many know that God is able to restore life and cause us to breathe again? In other words, we inhale as we receive the in-living, indwelling spirit and the life that God breathes into us. And when we exhale, hallelujah, we release life to others in order to build the kingdom of God here on earth. Tell somebody, my inhale is for me, but my exhale is for you. Each breath that you take is an indication of your survival. You thought you wouldn't make it. You thought life was over until you took your next breath. And every now and then, we find ourselves short of breath because we are overwhelmed by life circumstances, by family chaos, major changes or losses in our lives, and we feel lifeless. But we have to remember that God is aware of the things Things that interfere with our breathing and he knows exactly what you need in order for you to inhale and exhale again the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong but he who endures until the end but how can you endure to the end if you are having trouble breathing what do you do if you are out of breath well one of the things that you see runners do after they have run is to bend over in what appears to be a posture of exhaustion, but really they are bent over so that they can get more oxygen into their lungs and restore strength and energy. Likewise, when we run the race of life and we feel exhausted because of the issues that we face, we have to shift our posture so that we can be restored and energized. We have to shift ourselves into a posture of praise because the enemy is always trying to knock the wind out of you, but it is in those moments when you have to take a, a minute just to catch your breath and you pray. Tell somebody, I need a minute to catch my breath. You take a minute to breathe and you praise. Hallelujah. You take a minute to breathe and you worship 
worship. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That means that when I have trouble breathing, I have to shift myself to a position where breathing is easier because my life depends on it. I have to remember that God is my life source and that with every breath I take, he is there. He strengthens me. Hallelujah. He restores me. He replenishes me. Give me a minute to catch my breath so that I can remember that God is my strength and that he is literally the air that I breathe. Give me a minute to catch my breath so that I can get more of God. I need a minute, hallelujah, to catch my breath. I won't allow the weight of my circumstance to crush me and to stop me from breathing. I won't allow any person, place, or thing to hinder me from taking a breath because it is in him that I live and move and have my being. I may get a little winded, but that won't stop me from breathing. I may have to stop for a moment, but that won't stop me from breathing. Every breath that I take is an indication that God is in me and is with me. I'm going to need a minute, hallelujah, to catch my breath, but I won't stop breathing. Lift your hands if you know that God is your life source and with him, hallelujah, it is with him that you live, hallelujah, and move and you have your very breathing, you have your very being, hallelujah. Sometimes when our airways and our air passages are blocked, we have to lift up our hands. So I want to tell you to lift up your hands so that you can open up your pathway to breathing, hallelujah. And that is a posture of praise and of worship, hallelujah. There are times in your walk in Christ when you feel like you're about to give up, when you feel like you're about to throw in the towel, but you got to lift up your hands, hallelujah. And remember that God is going to give you a minute to catch your breath, hallelujah. If that's you, lift up your hands, hallelujah. If you need more strength, hallelujah, lift up your hands, hallelujah. Though there are times in our lives when we feel like we want to give in and throw in the towel, we have to remember that God breathed in us from the be very beginning. Hallelujah. It is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. It is in him, hallelujah, that we live and we move and we have our being. God is our life source. Our praise connects us to our life source. Our prayers, hallelujah, connects us to our life source. Our sacrifice, hallelujah, connects us to our life source. Our worship, hallelujah, connects us to our life source source we don't want to be disconnected from our life source hallelujah we want to continue to be connected to the God of our salvation amen hallelujah would you just stand on your feet hallelujah and begin to give God a praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to your name God hallelujah amen just before I was coming here I watched CBS Morning um, News, and one of the things, I, I caught it in the, my earshot, I wasn't really paying attention, but one of the things that they were talking about that caught my attention was that even though COVID presented us with one pandemic, that there is the expectation that depression is going to be the next pandemic, that mental health is going to weigh people down amen and even though sometimes we walk around with smiles on our faces and a lot of us are walking around with the masks the physical mask on our face and then there's some of us that are walking around with the figurative mask on our face amen we're walking around and we're heartbroken and we feel like we don't have connection to God we feel like our connection and our life source has been broken. Hallelujah. But how many know that God said he would never, ever, ever 
leave you, nor would he forsake you. He didn't forget about you. He did not forget your prayers for your son. He didn't forget your prayers for your daughter. He didn't forget the prayers that you lifted up on behalf of your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your grandmother, your grandfather. He didn't forget the prayers that you didn't pray at all, the things that weigh your heart at night, the things that keep you from sleeping and resting your spirit and your mind. God did not forget about you. We are in uncertain times, but one thing that we know for sure, God is still able to do all things but fail. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What does that mean? That means I would have given up if I didn't believe that I would see God's goodness right here on earth. I would have thrown in the towel if I didn't believe that I would see the grace of God working in my life and the favor of God working in my life right here in the land of the living. And though many of us are standing here and we are dealing with many things that we have not shared, I want you to know if you don't leave with any other thing today, know that God hears you. Where man looks at the outer appearance, God is always looking at your heart, and he knows the things that you've prayed in your private time. Hallelujah. If you would just stand where you are and lift up your hands, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we bless your name for this time of coming together and sharing with you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, oh God, that these people here, oh God, have not thought it robbery to be in communion with one another, oh God. We thank you and we bless your name, Father, that your word declares where two or three are gathered in your name, Father, you promised you also would be in the midst, Father. We thank you that we sit in the midst of your presence, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We believe that in the presence of the Father is the fullness of joy. Oh God, so we are leaving here with our hearts glad, oh God, rejoicing that you are a promise keeping God, that you are not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent, God. But God, every word that you have spoken over the lives of these that are here and even their bloodline, Father, it will certainly come to pass, oh God. God, we thank you and we bless your name, oh God, that even today Father, you are breaking generational curses and generational cycles in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you and we bless your name, oh God, that the oil, oh God, that has fall, fall, fallen, hallelujah, from on high, oh God, would saturate this place like never before, oh God. Singers, oh God, would sing under your anointing even the more, oh God. Preachers, oh God, would sing, would preach under your anointing even the more, oh God. The musicians would play under your anointing anointing father even the more, oh God, anoint the pews, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, oh God, that when people come in, oh God, they would not leave the same way, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, help us to know, Father, that you are our life source, oh God, oh God, the reason that we live, oh God, the reason that we are able to make it is because we are connected to you, oh God, help us not to be, oh God, the kind of people, oh God, that put other things before you, oh God, we want you to be at the forefront of every decision that we make oh God everything that we do oh God we want you to go before us oh God in the name of Jesus oh God we thank you that your word declares oh God that you know the plans that you have for us oh God plans of good and not of evil oh God to bring us to an expected end oh God we thank you and we bless your name oh God that you are having the way oh God that you are moving by your power oh God that you are releasing a new anointing Oh God, a fresh anointing, oh God, a fresh wind of your anointing. Hallelujah. In this place, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we bless your name, oh God. We believe by faith, oh God, that you have opened the hearts and minds of your people, oh God. Oh God, that they would not just be hearers of your word, oh God, but God, they would be doers of your word, oh God. That they would take actionable steps, oh God, towards having a deeper, more meaningful relationship with you, oh God. We thank you and we bless your name, oh God. We believe by faith, oh God, that you're touching somebody's mind, oh God, in the mighty 
name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that you're healing broken hearts, oh God. And God, you're changing doubtful minds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that you might be glorified, God. That you might get glory out of the lives of these, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that they would turn to be the same no more forever, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for the word that has been seated in your people today, oh God. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for your anointing, oh God. We thank you for your change, oh God. We thank you and we bless your name, oh God. We believe by faith that you are having your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Would you just begin to put your hands together? Hallelujah. And give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Point your right hand in this direction. Father God, in the name of Jesus, restore back into your woman servant on today, God. We pray, God, that you will bless her even now, God, for adhering to your word and being faithful to your word, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. If you need a minute to breathe, give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Your praise backs up your situation. Just enough room so you can raise your hands. Your praise backs up the situation so you can inhale and exhale. Somebody just give God praise. What you gonna do with your minute? What you gonna do with your break? Are you gonna give God praise? Hallelujah! Tell your son or your daughter, sit down, let me praise God for a minute. Hallelujah! Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Inhale and exhale. Give me a minute. Hey, glory to breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a great word. That was a great word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I like what she said. I, 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 I inhale. That's for me. But when I exhale, that's for you. Because I took a minute to inhale glory, to digest the strength to deal with you. Somebody. Oh, 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 yes, God. How many of you just need a minute? How many of you need just one minute? It seems like you got to deal with one situation after another situation after another situation. But God is telling you, it's all up to you that if you praise me in between the situations, that's where you get your moment. That's where you get your minute to breathe again. Somebody inhale and then exhale. Somebody inhale. Inhale your strength, inhale your power, inhale your deliverance, and exhale your praise, exhale your praise, exhale your worship. Oh, oh, oh. I need a minute, I need a minute. Some of us need a minute just to give God praise. Some of us, some of us need a minute. Just to tell God, thank you. There's so much going on in my life that I need a minute just to say thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Because it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes. Lost out of my mind. Dealing with COVID. Dealing with diabetes, dealing with HIV, but I inhale my deliverance, I inhale my healing, and now I'm actually praying. Oh, 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 I'm exhaling praise. 
I'm exhaling praise. I'm exhaling praise. Surely God deserves more than that. The fact that you can breathe, he deserves more than that. I thank God for that word. I thank God for that word. Only thing that word needs is a good praise on it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now that y'all even move. Only thing you need to do on that word is seal it with the praise. Somebody begin to clap your hands. Begin to stomp your feet. Come on. And while you're clapping your hands, I dare you to think about what he saved you from or where he brought you from. Because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Somebody ought to praise him. Open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Give him a dance. Give him a shout. Even in your living room. Somebody give God Social media, send the hearts up, send the fire up, send the thumbs up. Type in the comment section. I need a minute to breathe. Type it out. Those of you that are here, say it out of your mouth. I need a minute. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. I want y'all. I want y'all doing this next week. When things seem like they're overwhelming. When it seems like you can't take it no more. I want you to remember this word. And just begin to praise God. And when somebody look at you like you crazy, you just tell them, I need one minute. Hey! Hey! Little job, I need a minute. I need a minute job. I need a minute. I need a minute job. I need a minute. I need a minute job. I need a minute. I need a minute job. I need a minute. I need a minute job. I need a minute. I need one minute. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give our minister Kennedy another hand for allowing God to use us. Give me a minute to breathe. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Like you need that one minute. Because it takes one minute to induct you into a life of eternity. Just one minute to say, here and I. Lord, send me. I'm going to stop. I'm gonna act like I'm gonna stop. I gotta act like I was taught better than this. You know we're not supposed to get up and preach after the, after the but I'm telling you, when you have good word, hallelujah, good word will make you wanna preach. Hallelujah. Good word will make you wanna hear more preaching. Hallelujah, because you know it's the word that's gonna keep you. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. I need a minute, y'all. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Social media, we thank you for joining in with us on today. We want to keep the praise going, keep the worship going. We want to keep the prayer going. We pray for the names that are on the sick and shutting list. But I especially just want to hold up our sister Tinsdale in prayer on today. Hallelujah. For some of us know, I think Ms. Tinsdale, she's in the hospital. Hallelujah. I think she's doing a little bit better now, but we want to continue to pray for her. Hallelujah. We want to continue to pray for Deacon, our chairman, Deacon Benson's sister. Amen. Down in Ohio, I believe she is. Amen. Let's keep her in prayer. Hallelujah. Let's also keep uh, my cousin, her, her friend is in uh, uh, ICU, uh, June Barrows. Let's keep her in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. How many just really trust and believe God? Hallelujah. With every fiber of your being. That he can turn it around. Hallelujah. Anytime he get ready. Hallelujah. That's why we say if it's in your will, God. Hallelujah. Give us the strength to deal with it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we want to keep, hallelujah, the positivity going. We want to keep our prayers going up for these individuals. There's more names on the list, but I don't have them before me. But that is the name that are really sticking out in my head right now. Amen. I believe they called out the other names earlier on today. So let's keep those names in prayer. Amen. Let's not forget on Wednesday night, we have our prayer and inspirational talk. Amen. You can join in with us. You see the information is on social media. So you can see the call up line. You can see the, uh, the, the, the pin number to join, to join us on Wednesdays at seven o'clock. Amen. Uh, if you want us to pray for you, uh, you can reach out to us through social media, put your name on our prayer list and we will do that. Amen. Let's not forget also April, first Sunday in April. Yeah, I know it's Easter and, and second Sunday we are celebrating our 35th church anniversary. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thanking God. Hallelujah. We thanking God for the PPE. Amen. The PPE. That's the formula. I know they have it meaning for COVID, but we using the PPE, which is prayer, praise, and expect. Hallelujah. You pray about it, you praise on it, and then you expect God to come through on your behalf. Amen. 
So that's the theme for our church anniversary on this year. You can join us via social media on those two Sundays. Uh, Y'all know we are still in our in, in our, 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 our social distance and soft opening, so we only allowed a certain amount of people in the building. So we're telling everyone you have to put your name in on the list if you know for sure that you are coming. Don't put your name if you think you're going to come and take up a space that somebody else could have had. Amen. So make sure that you put your name Call up, put your name on the list. I will be there. Uh, save me a spot and let us know how many people coming with you so that we can prepare to um, have a room for our guest speaker that is coming and, and for our church, uh, church uh, uh, members as well. Amen. And if you're coming and you're not on the board, the board, you know what you're supposed to do. But we ask everybody else to represent with a $35 seed, representing the 35 years of service to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That does not include your tithes and your regular offering, please. That is something extra that we're telling God, thank you for, hallelujah, the 35 years of service. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I think that's about everything. You, you moved up to say something, D? Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Jesus. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Amen. The $35 seed. The boys, y'all know what y'all are supposed to do. And we want to come out and really give God praise. We're going to really uh, praise God for our founder who have uh, started this ministry over 35 years ago and all actual and, and, and in reality, we, we're just passing the anniversary of his death. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So we want to, can we just do this real quick? Amen? Everybody stand. Let's give a moment of silence for our founder. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. We thank God for the man who said yes to the vision. And look at what is still going on, even though he's not here with us. See, this is the type of legacy you want to build. This is the type of thing you want to type in, tap into for your family. That when you do something that is so strong that when you're no longer around, it is still going. Hallelujah. He's been gone now, I believe it's five years. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready to celebrate 35 years. Amen. So let's take a moment. And just give a moment of silence for our founder, the Reverend Garland Harrison Sr. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Give God a big praise for the man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. We thank God. Amen. Okay, we, I think we done did everything and we can ready to go home. But before we go, let's sow seed into the ministry. Let's sow seed via Zell. Hallelujah. Our Zell information should be right there on the camera screen, which is crossover bc358 at yahoo.com. And uh, cash app is crossover bc358 is our cash Abba, if you want to be a special blessing to the woman of God on today, hallelujah, you can just, when you give your seed, make sure you title it for Minister Kennedy so we we'll know to add that to her blessing on today. Amen. We thank God for you, 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 and you on today. We pray that something has been said or done that will encourage your heart to keep going on in God. Amen. Amen. We, if nothing else brings our, to our attention deep, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Deke. Deke, there's nothing else. That's it. We, we have a pantry today. Okay, hallelujah. We want to pray over the offering one time for the people that's on the Facebook and Instagram and for the people that are here too. So if whatever you're giving, let's stand to our feet. Amen. Hold your devices in your hand. Let's hold your offering in your hand. Hallelujah, those of you that are here, you want to bless the woman of God, 
put it in an envelope and put her name on it so that we'll know that that is for her as well, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these that are given on today. We thank you for these, your tithers, your givers, your seed sowers. We thank you, God, for what you have allowed us to hear, God, that is encouraging us today to keep going on with you, God. So we pray, God, you will bless those that are giving on today. Bless the tithers, God, for being faithful to your word where you said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. We thank you right now, God, for the givers, God, for the seed sowers, God. We pray, God, you will bless them mightily, God, for being faithful to your word, being faithful to your voice when you say give that $100, give that 50, give that 75, whatever it is that you have placed on their heart, God. We thank you right now, God. Hallelujah for these that are blessing your house. For we know that if we take care of your house, you will take care of our house. So I decree right now, God, strings of income, multiple strings of income into our separate homes, God. We pray, God, that you will allow the streams to flow like never before. And we will continue to give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, let somebody say amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Social media, we thank you. We give you praise. Don't forget to sow. Don't forget to pray. And know that you, when you get into a turmoil, just tell that devil with a praise, give me a minute to breathe. In Jesus' name, we love you. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give social media a hand as we sign out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you that are here, you can come forward. We're gonna, we don't know how we do, we face the wall, we come around.